Tell me about the first time you saw Rami as Freddy and the first time you saw yourself in character. Okay. Um, well, I've known Rami Malek for 11 years now, so I know this guy really well. And so it was amazing to step on set the first day, see him put on that mustache, see him put in the teeth, and completely like transform in front of my eyes. Like, because when I first heard about it, I was like, oh yeah, that's actually really good casting. But then once I saw it all come together and the mannerisms <laughs> and the clothes, I was just like, this is insane. Yeah. Um, and it was really like, I got, I got goosebumps. I felt yeah. like suddenly this was very real and that we were gonna actually be able to you know, pull this band off. What's great is that he doesn't, it, it wasn't just the physical resemblance that he brought onto set with him, but he brought like a, a, the spirit of, of Freddie onto set with him as well. Yeah. Like the kind of joy and irreverence and fun and uh, positive energy uh, every day on set, no matter how, how tired we were or how stressed we may have been or where we were at, and he led uh, by example. Mm. I don't, I think it was also really shocking because I, so much of you in character, and it was actually seeing Rami out of character that was then a shock to realize that all of those idiosyncrasies and such weren't your own. And to be like, my God, this is an entire facade. It was quite <laughs> remarkable. It's all a lie. Yeah. It's all a lie. <laughs> I feel like I, I have absorbed a lot of him now, and so I've taken up some of his. I do find myself doing this <laughs> yeah. every once in a while. Um, you know, what was very interesting was knowing that there wasn't just going to be, you know, the mustached Freddy version that I'd come to know in, in my childhood. And that was the first camera test I did. And, uh, you know, I was, I was quite elated to see it because I remember looking at Freddie Mercury saying, you know, I don't know if <laughs> I'd look anything like this guy. So... You know, seeing it actually start to come to fruition was, uh, was, yeah, it was a magical moment for me. But it's like Gwillem said, it was taking on um, the, the mannerisms and beginning to inhabit uh, his playfulness and, you know, just, just evolving with him as a character uh, is, is when I could really start to harness him, I feel. Cool. Okay, quickly. Name your favorite Queen songs that someone start with. My favorite Queen song is. Go. Yeah. Do it. Oh, hi, guys. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my favorite Queen song ever is uh, Somebody, somebody to, to Love. Somebody to Did love. you know that? Oh, How did you guys know I was going to say that? Mine too, you somebody to love. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, Bohemian Rhapsody is this epic masterpiece, but I always just felt like Somebody to Love was sort of equally grandiose, but a little more accessible. And the lyrics sort of always just touched me a little bit more, and just feeling that, like, angst of wanting to belong and wanting, you know, that kind of love. Um, but since we're all gonna say that, I, another song I really love, there's a deep track, is uh, Father to Son, which is off of Queen 2, which is not very well known, but I just think it's the, the prettiest song with just absolutely gorgeous lyrics. There we go. Nice. Um, I think my favorite song is still Save, Save Me. Me. <laughs> <laughs> um, Do you like his voice in that? <laughs> <laughs> Good. Do you want to go? No, it's good. Um, just because I love it, it's very much symbolic of what I love about um, so many of these Queen songs, which are, which seem so intimate in their lyrics, and yet are such anthems are so powerful. And I feel like you get such a good balance of both in that song. You get the full Freddie Mercury voice. I mean, it's going to get redundant, but I do love somebody, somebody to love. love. Don't we all? <laughs> because I also love Somebody to Love. I'm afraid to say, yeah, that's probably was always my favorite. But um, being as I'm repping uh, Brian May, I'm also going to say that I love um, 39, which is a song that he wrote, because I think it sums him up perfectly. A folk song about time travel with like oh beautiful God. guitar parts. And it's, just, it's a great song. I love it. Okay. Um, for the guys, what were the hardest songs to play and what was your favorite song to play? Mm. I thought. Oh. Okay, let's just keep going real quick. I think um, the hardest song to play, gosh, there was a lot. And in, in every song, there's a challenge in it, particularly with the way that Brian May plays a guitar. But I think 
I actually found uh, We Are The Champions quite a challenging song to play because it was written on piano. It doesn't kind of translate that easily to guitar, so just in terms of the technical challenge, I found that quite difficult. Um, Killer Queen is really tough. It's, mm. a, it's a sort of odd bass line that kind of comes in in interesting parts and does its own thing at times. Um, and then Bohemian Rhapsody is pretty fast and all over the place. Um, so those were the two, I think, that... Did you struggle uh, with the triangle part in Killer Queen? The triangle part, yeah. <laughs> I had to play two instruments in Killer Queen yeah. was the real issue. Um, and so bass, whip out that triangle. Mm. Um, but my triangle skills really progressed, You're great I feel triangle. like. Mm. Well, I didn't want to be the one to say it, so thank you, Gore. Because mm. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> and then really quickly, what do you think Freddie would think of the movie? Oh, wow. I hope that... It's a celebration. He would love it. I hope that Freddie would, would love the film. I well, I, I hope that he'd just... I uh, know. Go on. And I know. I love. I think he'd love the it. costumes. I'm not kidding. He would really... I think he would really enjoy it. He would, he would love... Uh, he would love to see us enjoying it. And, and yeah. love to, I think, be, be around us. I mean, I'm, this is a stretch. I, I can't can't speak for him, obviously, but I, I really think he would want it to be exactly the way we talk about it—a celebration, something that is so full of life that it almost explodes off the screen. And that's how I feel about the film: it, that it is that vibrant and uh, and and captivating, and tells a little bit about you know aspects of his life. Um, but also celebrates his life. He'd have a good time. 